central India, land of the Vindhya Hills. These elevations command strategic advantage over the surrounding plains, the perfect place to build fortifications. On one such rocky outcrop is the great fort of Gwalior. Stretched across the long and narrow hill, locally known as Gopagiri, this was one of India's most coveted citadels. Gwalia has witnessed the rise and fall of kings and conquerors, ancient Hindu dynasties, Turks, Afghans, Mughals, Marathas, and the British. No other fort in India has seen more rulers. The Maratha Sindhya dynasty took over in the late 18th century. Under them, the Gwalia state extended 60,000 square kilometers. They held the fort as a British protectorate until Indian independence. The fort's origin is unclear. Only myth and legend survive. The recorded history of Gwalior Fort goes back 1,300 years. Among its early constructions are 7th to 15th century Jain cave temples. A colossal 58-foot idol of Adinath, the first Jain Tirthankara, is among the many rock sculptures. Gwalior Fort is an architectural marvel. It stretches almost two and a half kilometers long. The average width is just under one kilometer. The ramparts are built on cliffs, which in most parts are near vertical. Gwalior Fort is also one of India's most beautiful historical buildings. The first Mughal emperor, Babur, called it the pearl in the necklace of the forts of India. The fort's splendor owes much to the palaces within, like Maan Mandir, famous for its intricate tile work. It was built in 1486 by one of Gwalior's greatest rulers, Tomar Rajput, Raja Man Singh. But with the invasions of the Turks, Pathans, Afghans, and then the Mughals, the fort acquired a sinister dimension. Well, the story of Man Mandir is a story of contrasts. From the outside, so beautiful. But when you walk down those stairs inside, it's dingy, it's dark, your eyes are not adjusted. Its dim interiors held dark secrets. Hidden passageways descended into hell, a political prison. What really went on in these prisons, you know? I mean, you can literally hear the screams. Many potential threats to the Mughal throne were sent to the dungeons of Gwalior Fort. Close relatives, even brothers of the ruling Mughal, were exiled to these hell holes. Absolute power demanded absolute ruthlessness. A prisoner's fate in medieval times was bleak. The conditions were horrific, but little chance of release or escape. Time would stretch in a medieval jail. Devious means were employed to knock contenders out of the succession race. Force-feeding daily doses of opium was a Mughal favorite. Some would spend years lying in a drug-induced stupor, incapable of any planning or scheming. The inmates may have been royalty, but in captivity, memories of their once charmed life of leisure and love would slowly fade like a distant dream. Meanwhile, in the pleasure palaces and grand halls, those who enjoyed favor carried on amidst pomp and glory. The spectacular buildings in and around Raja Man Singh's palace housed the royals. Within the fort walls are some of the finest examples of architecture in the country. 
a celebration of the best of Indian masonry and stone carving. But hidden from admiring eyes, horrors once lurked. Under the Mughals, the elegant halls beneath the Maan Mandir Palace were converted into terrifying torture chambers. It is believed that prisoners were hung from these iron rings. But that was only the beginning of the unending nightmare. Mughal torture methods were creative. And on occasion, they needed the services of a specialist. Being closely related to the king was not always a good thing. It often brought pain. A lot of pain. To eliminate a contender from the succession race without killing him was tough. But there were ways. A man without eyes could never rule. And deep in the dungeons, no one heard his screams. <laughs> 